Good morning. Namaste. This is Dr. Uma Kedivittil, Faculty of Agricultural and Veterinary Sciences, Jayoti Vidyapit Women's University, Jaipur. As you know, I'll be taking the course on Metabolism and Bioenergetics this semester. And in the previous session, uh, we have looked into gluconeogenesis, that is the synthesis of uh, glucose for uh, cellular uh, metabolic purposes because uh, red blood cells and brain requires glucose for its metabolism. It cannot uh, utilize the fatty acids or any such things. It requires glucose for its metabolism. And so when uh, we are on keto diets or something like that and enough glucose is not available in the body, then uh, glucose needs to be synthesized in the body. And uh, this gluconeogenesis that occurs mostly in the liver, but uh, to a small extent in the kidneys as well, is the means by which uh, this uh, gluconeo uh, glucose will be synthesized uh, by our body. And uh, the final step of this gluconeogenesis, the glucose 6-phosphate glucose conversion that occurs in the endoplasmic reticulum. And once that is produced in the endoplasmic reticulum, it will be directly transported to out of the cells through the uh, ER Golgi network. And once it is secreted outside of the cell, uh, it'll uh, get into the bloodstream. And from there, the RBCs can utilize the glucose and it can be transported to the brain and to the central nervous system where that can also be utilized. So that will be it for the uh, gluconeogenesis. In uh, this session, we will be looking at uh, anaerobic respiration. So uh, what is anaerobic uh, respiration? So anaerobic actually means uh, without air. So cellular respiration can be of uh, two types, the anaerobic and the aerobic uh, uh, means of uh, respiration. So aerobic means with air. And so aerobic respiration is the process of cellular respiration that uses oxygen produce energy from food and that is the most common in plants and animals including uh, humans birds mammals insects everywhere uh, but uh, while breathing we inhale air that uh, contains oxygen and uh, then um, that oxygen is used in our body as the final electron trans uh, acceptor in uh, electron transport chain and uh, then that uh, oxygen will be exhaled and uh, oxygen will be inhaled and uh, then uh, whatever glucose we are consuming, as I had shown, uh, one carbon, uh, like uh, the glucose will be split into two pyruvate molecules. And uh, then from there, one carbon dioxide is released when uh, acetyl CoA is formed. And then another will be released when alpha keto glutarate is formed in the Krebs cycle. And then the alpha ketoglutarate to succinate conversion will uh, release another uh, carbon dioxide. So finally, all these carbon dioxide molecules will be released and uh, uh, these carbon dioxide molecules will be exhaled out by our body. It will be transported by the blood through a bicarbonate system and then it uh, will get exchanged at the lungs and it will be ex exhaled out in our body. That is what happens in aerobic respiration. Now, uh, like, uh, so the general step for aerobic respiration will be glucose plus oxygen giving carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. Now, if we were to look into anaerobic respiration, so anaerobic means that uh, like without air as i was saying so uh, here what happens is glucose will produce alcohol plus carbon dioxide plus energy so there is no glucose plus oxygen uh, giving carbon dioxide plus water plus energy instead we will have glucose giving alcohol plus carbon dioxide plus energy so that is actually used uh, by mostly by unicellular organisms like bacteria or yeast, but it is also used by multicellular organisms uh, when there is like heavy or intensive exercise. 
then what happens is there isn't enough oxygen supply in order to meet the energy requirement. Then the cells, uh, especially the muscle cells, shift into the anaerobic respiration mode. But over there, what happens is it's not alcohol that is produced. It is uh, a lactic acid. So the pyruvate will get um, converted into lactic acid by the lactate dehydrogenase enzyme. Uh, and uh, like, as you know, uh, in Krebs cycle, pyruvate dehydrogenase converts the uh, pyruvic acid formed into acetyl coa. Now here, lactate dehydrogenase will convert the, glue, uh, the pyruvate formed into lactic acid. And that also uh, releases NADH. And uh, so there'll be enough amount of uh, energy that is uh, provided, but uh, not as much as the Krebs cycle. It's much less energy efficient. And uh, there is also the problem that this lactic acid gets some uh, accumulated and uh, that also leads to some amount of uh, muscle soreness. Uh, so if uh, we were to look into detail into the anaerobic respiration, so that is uh, mostly in the unicellular organisms and they are the fermentation reactions that are happening. So what is uh, fermentation? So fermentation occurs uh, mostly in uh, anaerobic cells and uh, uh, like uh, yeast cells and bacteria and also uh, to certain extent in the muscles of animals. So where glucose is broken down and the pyruvate that is formed by the glycolysis is converted either into alcohol or into lactic acid. Uh, so different cells can handle this uh, pyruvate uh, in two major ways. So the first, is, as I was saying, is fermentation where alcohol is produced. And the other one is the lactic acid fermentation where lactic acid is formed. So let us look into the lactic acid fermentation first. So lactic acid fermentation, what happens? As I was saying, lactate dehydrogenase will convert the pyruvate formed at the end of um, glyco glycolysis into lactic acid and uh, this uh, results uh, in very painful feeling in the muscles because uh, this accumulation of uh, lactic acid is uh, uh, ends up in a very painful process for the muscles. Then there is the alcohol fermentation where uh, ethanol is produced and that is the major uh, unicellular mechanism like uh, wine and beer fermentation like yeast is doing that like there are a variety of fungus and yeast and bacteria that can um, do this uh, alcohol fermentation process so that also happens in the absence of uh, oxygen so uh, like you if any of you have prepared wine at home then you would know that uh, when we are preparing the wine what we will be doing is essentially we will be uh, adding all the vegetables and the, I mean, the fruits, the grapes, or if you are actually uh, making carrot wine or something, then you will be adding the vegetables. So whatever the source, the raw material, you will be uh, adding it, you will be adding the sugar, you will be adding the yeast, and then this entire setup will be put in a ceramic jar uh, without uh, like uh, opaque ceramic jar and then it will be tightly closed and then it will be allowed to ferment because uh, then the oxygen availability inside the jar is like so reduced that uh, uh, we can actually, uh, the, uh, the environment inside becomes anaerobic and that is when the fermentation reaction takes place. So if, uh, we were to uh, look into the details of the alcoholic and uh, lactic acid uh, fermentation, then uh, NADH plus H plus is uh, oxidized to NAD plus and uh, it's uh, the uh, processes uh, uh, like energy release was not much and the sum total of uh, ATP molecules produced uh, is two which is very less compared to aerobic respiration. But um, this is actually commercially employed in the food and beverage industries, pharmaceutical industries, 
and uh, all that. So if uh, we were to look into the comparison of uh, aerobic respiration and uh, anaerobic respiration, then uh, the common steps will be glucose and glycolysis to form the pyruvate. And then in the anaerobic respiration, it will be fermentation, so lactic acid or alcohol fermentation, and that happens in the cytoplasm. Uh, and otherwise, uh, in the aerobic respiration, the pyruvate will get converted into acetyl CoA that is transported into the mitochondria. And then that gets converted into uh, like uh, carbon dioxide by the Krebs cycle. And then finally, energy is uh, produced by linking it with the electron transport chain. So, those are the major uh, features of anaerobic respiration. However, like uh, anaerobic respiration is uh, extremely important in uh, one uh, fashion, and that is that uh, uh, it is a very commercially important process. And that is the major uh, requirement for uh, uh, like why to study about this uh, anaerobic respiration. Because uh, this anaerobic respiration, this uh, uh, organisms have been genetically engineered in order to prefer the alcoholic fermentation reactions or the lactic acid fermentation reactions, the acetate uh, formation, uh, like. Uh, acetic acid formation reactions and stop it over there rather than becoming the uh, acetyl CoA and then uh, going into the Krebs cycle rather than going for the aerobic uh, respiration method. If uh, it were going into the fermentation reaction, then the production of lactic acid, the acetic acid or the vinegar, acetic acid is vinegar or uh, even uh, the alcohol that is uh, produced in the wine and the beer and uh, even the production of uh, other hard liquors, they are all uh, commercially very important and uh, very industrially relevant process uh, from mol uh, molasses, sugarcane molasses or uh, other agricultural sources. This alcohol fermentation, the alcohol industry is uh, one of the major industries. And so that is one of the major reasons why you should be looking into this as well as if uh, there, is a uh, there is a relevance in the health field that if the muscles do not get uh, enough uh, air when uh, we are exercising, then it leads to muscle fatigue because uh, of the accumulation of uh, lactic acid in them. So there will be some amount of like initially for some time we'll be able to do the exercise until the lactic acid built up is too high that it leads to muscle fatigue. So these are all the major relevant points with respect to alcohol for, uh, fermentation and anaerobic respiration. So with that, we will be closing the session on anaerobic respiration as well as the carbohydrate metabolism. In the next session, we will be looking into the protein metabolism and the fate of amino acids in the body once uh, they have been uh, uh, like whether uh, if we are having the protein and then uh, how it's degraded and how it's absorbed and all that that we will be looking at in the next session so that will be all for this session thank you have a good day